Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in our video. This one's gonna be about how to worship the Father in spirit and truth. And uh, I want to before I start this video, I want to share with you guys a verse. This is in three John chapter one verse four it says, "I have no greater joy than to hear my that my children walk in truth." Okay, God doesn't have no greater joy to, but to hear His children walk in truth. Okay, I'm explaining what does the truth mean, and also. Uh, this is in John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, it says, But the hour come and is now when tr the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, with the worship that we hear is like going to church and lifting up your hands and worshiping the gospel music. Not saying that's not wrong, but I'm going to be talking about the true, what, what God is really talking about in this verse in this video. So, guys, go. If you guys are edified, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, none of this is in the order, but this is how you worship the Most High in spirit and truth. And um, let's start with this one: is honoring God's commandments. Okay, Jesus told us. Okay, remember, Jesus was all Jesus was about when he said to love the truth in action. Okay, so that means we got to be putting action. Not to say we love the truth, we love Jesus with our words, but there's no action to back it up. So you just made it very clear: if you love me, you keep God's commandments. Okay, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So this isn't, like I said, this is not an order, but this is one of the most important things, keeping God's Ten Commandments, okay? One of the most important things. Um, next one up would be to be uh, be humble, being a humble servant, okay? That's what it's all about. A lot of people, they get, and they come into the church, they start reading their Bible, and the knowledge puffs them up, and they get like a religious spirit. But God is looking for people who are humble. He's not dealing with the pride, the arrogant. Okay, remember the fear of the Lord is to hate uh, evil, to hate arrogancy and pride. It also says that God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So God is looking for people to serve him, to the servants that are going to be humble. Okay, this is very key. All right, remember God, remember God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So that's what it's all about, being humble, not letting the knowledge that you've been blessed with puff you up and to feel like you're better than other people. The knowledge that God has blessed us with, remember, knowledge is a spiritual gift. It's to edify the body, to help other people, to uplift the brother, to uplift the sister. Okay, next one up would be to meditate on God's word. Actually, before I read that one, I want to go over this one because this is one of the most important things that you, I see, especially in a lot of churches and a lot of Christians, okay, is you got to give up the traditions of man, okay? Traditions of man could be, you know, pagan customs such as Easter, Halloween, Christmas, um, thanks, uh, Thanksgiving, you know, all these pagan customs. I have a video on this. If you guys haven't seen it already, it's called Holy Days versus Satan's Pagan Holidays, okay? So, Giving up the traditions of man, and when you do this, you're not going to be an enemy. This is what be, uh, being truly set apart is all about. Giving up what the world does, you do the opposite. Okay, we we do our research, we do our history, we do our due diligence. To actually, you know, the Bible says that the, the wise uh, look forward to his going, but the simple believe every word. So when all these holidays people are celebrating, we're actually going to see, okay, what's the origins behind this? Okay, and we realize that Jesus' Jesus' birthday wasn't on Christmas. There's no proof in the Bible. That says that, okay, we look at Easter and how it's linked to pagan roots, okay? Easter's don't even lay uh, eggs, okay? So it's actually, I could keep going on. I already have a video about that if you haven't checked it out already. But it's giving up the traditions of man. The, a lot of these churches, they want you to follow the traditions of man. And once you truly follow the word of God, you're going to see that you're going to now become an enemy, okay? Even Jesus warned us that you will be hated by all men for my name's sake because you're choosing to follow his word. And when you follow his word, your foundation is going to be built, be built upon a rock and not a sand. Okay, so it's very, very powerful when you take heed to Jesus' teachings and you actually apply it to your life. Many people are hearers and not doers. You don't want to be like that because when you do that, you're deceiving your own self. Okay, this is in uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. So it says that, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men and the rudiments of the word in the world, and not after Christ. Okay, so... This is one of the most important things as when it comes to worshiping uh, Yah in spirit and truth is giving up to the traditions of man. This is hard for some people because that's what all their family does. That's what all their friends are doing. So they've been programmed and conditioned that, okay, you know, the, the herd mentality of everyone's doing it, so I'm going to do it too, okay? But God's looking for someone to actually stand up for something and to separate themselves, okay? I'm going to go over that in a bit, being set apart. Okay? That's what God's looking for. He's not looking for people who want to fit in with the world because God did not call us to fit in. He called us to be stay, to stand out. He called, he, we're the black sheep. We're the ones who are actually... And if in one family, there's always one black, black sheep. That's how God created it to be because it adds balance. So people could be without, you know, well, I didn't want a day of judgment. Well, I didn't know. God always puts a black sheep in, in a family or in a friendship to let you know, okay, hey, we're, we're doing this wrong. And it's up to you to warn people too because the Bible says that 
will have blood in our hands if we don't tell other people their errors or sins. Okay. So next one up would be faith and works. Okay. I'm gonna go over that next one, but faith and works. A lot of people just believe in faith, faith, faith. But the Bible says faith without works is dead. As a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. That's in James chapter two, verse twenty-six. Okay. When you have true faith, it's gonna produce works. My faith has produced me to make this video and my other videos. Okay. It's all through my faith in the Most High God and the Son Jesus Christ. Okay. So faith and works goes hand in hand. Uh, there's no being lazy, slothful. There's no uh, cherry picking. No, like you got to put apply. You know, the Bible even says that he has created us to be a worksman of Christ. Okay, so we're going to be working for them. What, what does it mean to work for the kingdom of God? It's to save souls. That's the, what the bottom line is. To save, soul, to save souls and to bring souls to Christ and to, the, and to God. Okay, to bring, his, to, to, to bring his souls to his kingdom. That's what it's all about. So we must have faith and that faith is going to produce works. Okay, it could be... Um, a hundredfold or it could just be 30 or it could just be 60 but it's still having some type of works okay next one up will be to meditate on the word of god okay um a lot of people been brainwashed to think that meditation is demonic it's new age and yes there are some demonic there's always going to be some demonic meditation though saying always like twists everything god wants us to do but the real actual meditation is to meditate on the bible and I can honestly say, guys, I'm always meditating on the Bible. Even I do this unawarely. Like, there's always a Bible verse that God puts in my heart or, like, a chapter in the Bible. Like, today, tonight, I'm going to meditate on Proverbs chapter 8 because that's the verse talks about wisdom. And right now, I've been really seeking that more uh, lately. So, um, I'm going to read this verse to you guys. And this is in Psalms chapter 1, verse to, uh, 1 to 3. So, it says, Blessed is a man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. So be set apart, okay? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. He shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, he prosper, okay? And also, um, that's all I was saying to you guys, like when you meditate on, on a, how do you meditate on the word of God? It's simple, just whatever uh, chapter, whatever verse you're reading that really hits you, just like think about it when you're showering, when you're going to work, um, when you're cooking food, when you're eating, you know, stuff like that. Just I'm always meditating on the Bible and it keeps my mind centered on Christ and on his word, which is a true protection. And I feel like everyone should be doing that. Everyone should be doing that. Whether it's just like Psalms chapter 82, verse 6. I don't even know what that verse is, but it's, you know, whatever, whatever verse hits your heart, meditate on it. And you can just meditate on it for five minutes or whatever how long you want, whatever how long you want. There's no time limit to it. But I want to add on to this too real quick. It says, uh, honoring God's commandments. So this is 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. It says, he that said, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Who in today's age, guys, is keeping God's Ten commandments? There's not many people. And these people are trying to teach you the word. They're trying to teach you the Bible. But the Bible makes it clear that he that says, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So we must follow what the word says. Not with, if a man, now there's nothing wrong with following, like following a man who's being used by God, but make sure that man has sound doctrine. Make sure that man is following the word of God because the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. So this is simple. Whoever's not keeping God's commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Simple. This is not, not taking this verse out of context. This is plain. There's nothing to be taken out of context. Okay. So next up. Is walking in the spirit. This is what a lot of us struggle with. And the reason why we all struggle with this because we have a flesh and our flesh is always waging war against our spirit and our spirit is always waging war against our flesh. So that's why I said walk in the spirit because when you walk in the spirit, it's a lot easier to fight against the flesh. Not to say that you're not going to fall short or temptations won't get you or, you know, you won't make a mistake because we're human. It's going to happen. But for the most part, you're going to be winning more battles. You're going to be winning more of uh, the warfare. Okay. So when you walk in the spirit, you're feeding your flesh. I'm oh, sorry. When you walk in, the, take that wrong. When you walk in the spirit, you are feeding your spirit, which is now able to fight against your flesh a lot easier. So I advise people to tell me, no, Mark, I'm struggling with this addiction. I'm struggling with a certain sin. I always tell people, guys, walk in the spirit. What are you doing? What are you doing in your daily life? That's feeding your spirit okay are you feeding your flesh more than your spirit if that's the case you're always going to be given over to your temptations you're always going to be given over to your sin so always make sure you're walking in the spirit that's what all about worshiping the father in spirit and in truth is okay number next one up will be a repentance lifestyle this is very important because we all fall short we all make mistakes and you know we're, no no one's without fault so you got to be repenting daily this is that's why i put lifestyle okay it's always an everyday thing uh, whether it's a willful sin or whether it's an unwillful sin, you just got to be repenting, asking God for forgiveness. Remember, um, God gives us mercy. He gives us chances. He gives us warnings. He has grace for us, but we can't abuse the spirit of grace. The Bible says that, shall we, uh, since the grace shall abound, shall we abuse it? 
God forbid, okay? So always make sure that yes, we are covered under grace, uh, but we don't wanna keep on sinning because if you do keep doing that, you're gonna be given over to a reprobated mind. In this world, guys, the society we live in, a lot of people have a reprobated mind. Unfortunately, even a lot of believers have that uh, reprobated mind. And what is a reprobated mind? A mind that feeds off of sin, a mind that feeds off of wickedness and evil. Okay, so you don't want to be have that type of um, mind. So next one up would be having a renewed mind. Okay, to combat what I was just saying. So this is in uh, Romans chapter uh, twelve, verse two. It says, "And conform not to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, and that ye may prove what is good, what what that is good and acceptable and perfect and will of God." Okay, the Bible says that he who does the will of God shall abide forever. So we should be doing that. The will of God should always come first in our life. Okay. Um, to keep God's commandments, keep the faith in Christ, stay on the narrow path. The, the will of God is to always come first in your life. Not your, now, of course, we have a job. We have to work. We have to provide for our family or friends or our family, right? And, and that's true, but always make sure the will of God is coming first in your life. You don't want to prioritize that first, the kingdom. You want to have a kingdom mind when it comes to worshiping the Father and Spirit and truth. Always, always, okay? All right, so repentance lifestyle, having a renewed mind. Okay, and a renewed mind is that means that you're you're learning, you're unlearning and relearning, uh, relearning. Okay, the lies that we inherited in the world, we gotta unlearn that, and that's what comes with being humble, guys. That's what all of being a humble servant is about. Okay, because to to be to 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 have a renewal of mind, you have to admit, okay, the things that I was told, I was taught, was a lie. Most of the things. Okay, and that's what being humble is now. Okay, let, let me correct my wrongs. Let me correct my rights. Because the people who are proud in heart and heart. And prideful they can't come to realization that they're wrong never okay so being humble is like okay i'm wrong uh, let me fix it let me let me get right okay so yeah being a humble servant and also that is a fruit to the spirit and um you know being being meek my right, next one up is being bold okay being bold and the bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion so of course you want to be righteous and not be not being afraid to stand for something not being afraid to walk in the spirit of truth not being afraid to tell people the truth. Not being afraid to do what God is calling you to do. You got to be bold. Okay, we got to be warriors of God, man. Put on the full armor of God daily, every single day and fight. Don't be afraid to tell people what, that what God has put in your heart. Never be afraid. Because I remember back in 2018 when I first picked up my cross for the first time and God was calling me. Uh, I lost all my friends. I was telling them about, you know, the world that we live in and, you know, the Bible and like they all just disappeared. And that's what happens. Okay. Uh, it's a lonely world. And that's what the Bible says. Only few find a narrow path. And God has chosen you so you can no longer stand in the crowd. You got to, you know, be, st be set apart. He's a call you to stand out from the crowd. So that's going to come with you being, you know, is my feeling isolated from a period of time and going through stages of loneliness. But best believe, guys, the Holy Spirit is always with you. So you're never truly lonely in the spirit. All right. Next one up would be having the spirit of Christ, okay? Having the spirit of Christ, which is very key, okay? The Bible says in Romans chapter eight, verse nine, it says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It, it so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his, okay? So if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So anyone who's trying to worship the spirit and worship God in spirit and truth, okay? They're, 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 they're in error, guys. There's a lot of people who denounce in this day and age, they denounce denouncing Christ. Okay, so how can you worship the Father if you don't have the Son? Okay, the Bible even says that no man can come to the Father but first through the Son. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Having the Spirit of Christ, being set apart, a renewed mind, denying yourself daily, which is next up. Denying yourself daily, which is, you know, also walking in the Spirit. Um, that means, you know, you're not giving over to your willful sin. That's what denying yourself daily means. Not giving over to your willful sin, being prepared for the world to hate you, being prepared to be taken for granted, used and abused. Um, going through periods of where people are separating yourself from you because you're choosing to follow your God. So you got to be prepared to deny yourself daily, pick up your cross, okay? That's what it's all about, guys. That's what being a Christian is all about. And, you know, that's why when I see, like, certain, like, mainstream Christianity and they got all these consecrations, all these people, it's like, wait, the Bible says that when you follow his word that people won't want, want to be around your company. So always take heed and you always have discernment to understand that are these people following the truth or is it just, you know, having the traditions of man, okay? Next one up is obedience, which is, you know, correlates to obeying the word of God, living in this, walking in the spirit. But it all goes down to this. All this is obedience, guys. And that's what it all stems down to, worshiping the Father in spirit and truth. It's all about obedience, having, obe having obedient in heart. And uh, I want to share with you guys another verse too as well. This is in... 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 14 to 18. So it says, Be not unequally and yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Okay, so if you say that you abide in the light, 
you have you can't have fellowship with those in darkness okay you can't because they're going to cause you to even the bible says that evil communication corrupt good manners so they're going to cause you to backslide they're going to cause you to go back to your vomit they're going to cause you to everything that you were doing you're building for the kingdom of god is all going to be destroyed because you had uh company with darkness okay it says what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness okay it also says that verse 17 to 18 says wherefore come out from among them and be separate said the lord and I and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Okay, so that's what you'll be his sons and daughters. So touch not the unclean thing and come up from among them, which means to be set apart. Okay, being holy. That's what what a set apart means to be holy. Okay, to be separate from the world. That's what God really instructs for all of us to do. You know, for all anyone who professes to be a Christian, uh, to follow Christ, we must be set apart. That's what that's one of the main things we can do because the world hates. The world is not when you're set apart and following God's orders, laws, actually and commandments, they're not gonna like you. You're gonna be now be an enemy to your household. You're gonna be an enemy to those who are of this world. Okay, so remember, guys, worship the Father in spirit and truth. And uh, one last verse I'll give you guys this is Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 25. So it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whoever shall lose his life for my name's, for my name's sake shall find it. Okay, so. And you to willing to find your life, you must first lose it. Okay, it's like I said earlier, I lost all my friends, people separating themselves from me. But even in the midst of all that, I never gave up the faith. And within due time, within you know years later, now I am where I am. So I gave all praises to the Most High, worshiping the Father in spirit and truth comes with benefits. Best believe, being obedient comes with benefits. The Scripture says that if you're obedient, um, God's blessings will overtake you, and if you're disobedient, the curses will overtake you. That's in Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight. So I hope you guys got edified from this video. If you haven't already, guys, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you and if you wish in your heart to share um, share this video on all social media platforms, I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.